Y'all, I've said it once before, and I will say it again, that all supervillains origin stories contain a jacked up mama, and this is no different. My name is Ashley, and this is My Sweet Perspective, where I give my take on all things TV and movie related, and I am here to put you on, okay? And today, we are back to talk The Penguin. Episode one opens up. We find out that the mayor has been unalived. We have a new interim mayor, a black queen, okay? And she will be running Gotham. Gotham is in disarray. Half of the city has been blown away. Um, you may need to go back and watch the Batman from 2022 to get some context about where we are starting out. Come to find out the Riddler riddled, okay? Did his big one, did the absolute most. Carmine Falcone is gone, okay? Gone on to be with the Lord or gone on to be somewhere else. And his son, Alberto, is next in line to run the city, right? Or run, you know, the families, okay? Um, but Alberto has a, has a problem. He's hooked on them drops, okay? If you watch Titans on Max, which is canceled now, you'll know about these drops, honey, and what they do. But, he, but he's hooked on it. But he's been out of rehab, and we're thinking, you know, he might be on to something, okay? Um, but the Penguin is watching as well. And the Penguin has a plan that no one knows about, okay? So he goes and sets up a meeting with Alberto because, you know, the Penguin has been Carmine's right-hand man for all this time, and he needs to submit his place in the organization, okay, now that Carmine's gone. Uh, and so he meets with Alberto, and they're talking, you know, have a drink, because a drink's not going to send you over the edge, right, Alberto? It's not, as long as it's not the drops, you're good. All the while, we're getting to learn who the penguin is, because this penguin is not the penguin that you knew before, okay? He's not the penguin from Gotham. He's not the original penguin that we met in the original Batman. He is none of those people. He is his own person, and I'm actually here for this super violent, super manipulative penguin who has the gift of gab. And so they're talking and Oswald is basically, well, Oz. And so he's talking to Alberto about the plan. Um, and basically Alberto disrespects this man. He tells him a story um, about Cabrese and Alberto says, what you, you trying to say? I'm like him. I'm nothing like him. And he laughs in his face. Why did he laugh in the penguin's face? But he laughed after he had already told the Penguin his plan for this new drug that's going to revolutionize the drug game in Gotham, baby. But when he laughed in his face, that was the last thing he ever did because the Penguin blew him away. Now, Al Alberto was, was disrespectful, but I didn't expect Oz to take action like that. This was very impulsive, um, you know, very, you know, off the cuff, very reactive, not what I'm used to, um, from the iterations of Oz that we've met. Hey, but you gotta, you gotta get it back. You gotta get it back and do what you gotta do. So now we have a body to dispose of as he is, you know, wrapping up the body, kicking it down the stairs, gets to his car, finds out that the young thugs, the young hoodlums, the riffraff street rat, I don't mind that they are out there trying to take the rims off his car. And so with Oz, Oz is not, it's not ask no questions. It is shoot first, ask questions later. And so he pulls the blicky, he's shooting at everybody. And baby, I want to know how you stealing and you stutter, sir, because we meet Victor. Victor is the only one of the kids that did not get away. And we think that Oz is going to blow him away. But he's like, listen, I can be valuable to you. But he can't even get the words out because he stutters so bad. And I guess because Oz has his disability and this man stutters, he felt sorry for him, shows him a little bit mercy. Plus, he needed some help with his body. And so now Victor has been enlisted as the driver. And I'm thinking, why is this taking all night? Okay, we're putting bodies in different cars. We're sitting around the open fire. We're smoking cigars. We're doing all this thing, all the things. And I'm sitting here like, what? What? why are we doing all of this? Like, let's get to the place. So it's morning time. Um, and you know, he's like, Victor, turn around. And he, Victor's like, no, 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 no. In this moment, he didn't stutter. I said, I guess you don't stutter no more. Um, when your life is on the line, you don't stutter no more. 
you don't stutter no more when your life is on the line. I guess not. But he he basically begged for his life. You know, I want to live. I can be valuable. I can be all of these things. But actually, before that happened, we did get to meet Eve, who is apparently the Penguin's uh, lady friend. And she is big fine, but she's also a woman of the night. OK, but he goes over there to submit his alibi uh, and does what he needs to do. At this point, Oz is like, Victor, I own you you mind. And it felt a little racist. I can't lie. I, I didn't like that part. Um, before we get rid of the body though, before it's in the trunk of this red car, we do take the ring off and we find out that this wasn't actually Carmine's ring that Alberto was wearing. This is Sal Maroney's ring that he had on. And so everything I will say that the penguin has done up to this point is calculated. All right. Um, he is not making any missteps. The only thing I think he did um, that was off the cuff was actually unaliving Alberto. I, but I think that his initial plan may not have been to, to go this route. OK. Um, and so after all that, uh, we know Victor will be Oz's puppet. Uh, so we get back to Oz's house in the city. And he took off them shoes, baby, them feet that foot. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared for this. I'm going to zoom in so you can get a very close look uh, at, at his left foot, baby, because it's, I understand the walk. I understand the talk. I understand all of that. And listen, Oz had a very well-appointed bedroom, satin sheets. Like, I'm like, who are you entertaining, sir? Um, and so now we're back in the purple mozzie uh, and he's going, and we're actually getting to see him work his operations, right? So he's got people that are pushing the dope. Um, he's got people that he's about to send letters to, to, to basically black man. And we're just kind of seeing how the operation is running. So as we're doing that and we see big money's going through there and it's running like a well-oiled machine, we find out that the families have called him in. And Victor's like, what does that mean when they call you in? And he's like, I don't know. We're going to see. And so he gets there and he's meeting the other leaders of the family now that Carmine is gone. And he, they're like, listen, we don't even owe you this sit down, but you're done. We're consolidating. Your business is going to shut down. We're not doing any of this. And he rolls out the plan that Alberto gave. He's like, hey, hold on. We don't have to do this. And the one guy was like, listen. I don't want you to be under any delusions. You don't matter here. You work for us. You're our boy. Okay. You don't run any of this. The families are still in control. And of course he, he doesn't like that, you know, because Oz's temper can get the best of him, but he sits there and he takes it because he has to now enter Sophia Falcone. I said, D does she have anything on Harley Quinn? This lady is un hinged immediately from looking at her you know something is off with her we find out that she's recently been released from Arkham Asylum and we already know what goes down there and she's got questions because where is her brother okay and so we go to lunch she and Oz and we watch her devour the salad <laughs> like I mean she is she you sure can put it away little lady you know what I mean she's going to town and, and Oz is just watching her and she basically is like, listen, where's my brother? Where's my brother? Because, you know, they have discounted you, baby, but I see you. I know who you are in this moment. We know that the trajectory has shifted because she's like, you're not as stupid. You're not dumb. You're not any of those things. Oz and I see you as they're saying their goodbyes. Um, because you know, he sold her a bill of goods, you know, you know, your brother's on the dope. He runs off. He'll be back. He never, he never not returns home. Okay. But again, as they're leaving that kiss on the cheek, we already know what that is going to mean. And I will say this, Oz is kind of smooth. Oz got the gift of gab, but baby, she sees right through you. Okay. So next we're taking Victor on field trips and we are going to, um, I believe the East side because he says, Victor says he's from the tenement housing and um Oz says that he is from the east side but but further out and so we go to his home his his Volvo playing Dolly Parton nine to five and we go meet his raggedy mama yes his mama's raggedy and like I said in the beginning of this video every supervillain I feel like their origin story starts with a psychotic mother and she is no different his mother is clearly suffering 
from either early onset dementia, Alzheimer's, something, um, but something's not connecting. She She's lucid enough to be corrupt and put her son on um, what I feel like is an unaliving mission because she feels as though he's capable, you know, of running everything, but something is amiss. Something is awry. She thinks there's kids in the bathtub when there's not, and she's not taking her medicine. Okay. He brings her this necklace that Alberto had thrown at him and told him to give to some woman. Um, you know, she's, you know, uh, she wants him to run Gotham. She says, you know, they tried to keep you down, baby, but you're not, you're, you're a big man. And, you know, Oz kind of tells her his concerns and she's like, do you know how weak that sounds? She don't want the weakness basically. And what I heard in the after show is all Oz wants is his mama to tell him that she loves him. And, and she's not going to do that unless um, he gets and arrives to the place she thinks in her mind that he should be. Next, we kind of see Oz watching this black and white, put the blame on Mame. And when Victor asks, he says, you know, she's just a scapegoat. And I wonder if we're going to come back to that moment because that was interesting for me. Um, as we're leaving, you know, it's, it's time for he and Victor to part ways. And he's like, listen, Vic, you know, you need me. You need me. I'm the only one who understands you. You're like me. You know, people like us, we got to stick together. You know, I've got big plans for you. You can go along for the ride, selling dreams. And I said, is this the enlistment speech or what? But they part ways and apparently having a plan. Um, and again, he says, you need a guy like me, Vic. You, you need me in your life. And next thing we see is Oz going to the Pinta to see Sal Maroney and he goes and he makes this confession and says that you know I'm done with the Falcons and sounds like I don't trust you Oz get the f out of here okay and Oz says listen I'll be back in a couple days and we'll talk to, we'll talk we'll talk then and he leaves the ring that was originally his ring and Sal wants to know where you get it he said don't worry about that I'll see you in a couple days and he says listen Oz you played in my face you lied to me you you got us busted. You, you set me up with the Falcons. How, why would I trust you now? And he says, okay, don't worry about it. I'll be back. But here's your ring, okay? Um, and he says, maybe I'm more than what you think. And clearly, Oz, you are proving yourself to be more than what we think. And now where the chase is on. The Falcones are following Oz because now Sophia got it in her mind that he's done something to her brother, okay? They own your A. They own your A, Mr. Postman. Okay. Um, and eventually they get him. It was, it was a smooth diversion in his purple mozzie. You know, he goes into this little city, city market or whatever, doubles back, gets in the car, but they're there. The one guy gets him, he gets away from him. The guy gets hit by a bus. But before we know it, they're on his tail. Next thing we see is his hairy, big body, naked. Okay. Being tortured by Sophia and Poppy from Ghost, like Poppy. Poppy, Lorenzo, where did you come from, sir? But apparently he is uh, Sophia's right-hand henchman, okay? Because I'm thinking they're going to cut off his arm with piano wire. Listen, a lot was going on in this scene. They put the blicky in his mouth, which is a scene I hate. I, the, the, these are moments that are leaving an indelible mark on my brain. I can't unsee it. Um, but alas, you know, it happened. And so all this is going on, the torture. What did you do with my brother? Tell me my brother's alive. Da, 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 da. Next thing we see is the same red car that we had planted, right? In that lot. And, you know, it's got Alberto in the trunk. And Sophia lets out a scream. Okay. Next thing we know, Oz is free and he's talking to Victor and said, listen, I thought it'd be more impactful if it was just the head and the pinky and all that. And Vic was like, listen, I didn't know where to cut. I didn't know how to cut. I didn't know what to do. All right. Um, so just be glad that the job got done. You're free now. But now we have we have other stuff to contend with because Sophia's is not done. Um, I think this is this is a cute little fix. Right. Um, the the car said payback. So they're going to think it's the Maronis. The Maronis, uh, Oz says, have no other choice but to take responsibility. So now there will be a war between the Falcons and the Maronis, which is the prime time for him to make his move with this new plan. It was planned out perfectly. It was a genius plan. It, it, it was it was genius. I have no complaints about Oz, y'all. I am in to the penguin. 
Um, this was a great first episode. I will say that it did feel like a movie to me, which I think is fine as we're laying groundwork and really getting to understand who this character is. Um, I adore, I, I adore Oz. I, I adore this imagination of him because not only is there a brutality to him, there is also um, a kindness and a gentleness. You know what I mean? Um, I love the duality in the character so far and we'll just see where he goes. But from the first episode, I think they did a great job of showing a lot of different sides of him. His, his need for validation from his mother, his, his empathy for other people who may have disabilities, his reckless, sometimes volatile nature, his gift of gab, his, his master manipulation. Like we really are getting a well-rounded and complex character in Oswald Cobb. And I am absolutely here for it. Um, if I was rating this episode out of 10, I'm going to give the first episode a strong eight. I really, really enjoyed it. I feel like you can watch this without having watched the Batman and you would be just fine, right? Because I think they're doing a great job of telling a good story. But you guys let me know in the comments below. Let me know what your thoughts were. Were you into it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let's have a discourse in the comments. And if you're still here, Thank you so, so much for watching y'all. We are almost at 5k and I could not be any more grateful for you guys coming, showing up and showing love and support every single time. Um, it does not go unnoticed, but if you haven't subscribed, what are you doing? Okay, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, drop a comment, consider the membership. We do have a watch along every Saturday night, um, along with a ton of other perks. So check that out. And I will see y'all in the next video. Rita Louise Watson, you better get your behind in this house now. Don't make me come down there. Wait, sit down. Why don't I know you? You've been hanging with the homies in the hood for a while now. About time we jump your punk ass in. That's right.